course, please. Hello. Hello, thanks. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Wonderful. And Tara? Hi. Perfect. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Right in my gum. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh, wait, I should probably not have gum in my mouth during this <laughs> meeting. <laughs> I have to like consciously <laughs> think that. Yeah. How are you? Have you stayed oh, healthy? I have. I have. I've been taking Good. every medicine in my cabinet. <laughs> we leave Sunday for Italy and I'm trying to stay well. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, we haven't been there, so either. So that's good. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. it really cold there? Yeah. Colder like snow. than here. Yeah. A little bit. It snowed a little bit uh, yesterday, but I don't think it stays around, but it's cold. Yeah. So. I was like, why are we going in the winter again? Because <laughs> my son's a farmer and he can't go in the summer. But uh, oh, yeah. <sighs> oh, well, I hope um, we have a fabulous time. I think we will. I'll come back 10 pounds heavier for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I always think that when I go traveling and then because I walk so much and I'm like constantly moving the, and the food, I don't know, there's something different about the food. I yeah. always am like, oh, I lost a pound. This is great. <laughs> 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 well, will still be a good itinerary for every day. And it's like, you were going to eat here for lunch. We're going to eat here for dinner. So, okay. So, well, yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. Not this time. <laughs> Hi, Ann. Hi, Ann. Hi, guys. Hi. Where, where are you going? I didn't hear the, the destination. Uh, Italy. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to meet my Ooh. son's fiance's family. Wow. She lives in Reggio Emilia, oh, which is oh my in the northern part of Italy. There's and a really famous spend... uh, art school there. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, that's There's a, that's a method. The Reggio Emilia yeah. method is a very, <laughs> yeah. very cool thing with little kids. Oh, my gosh. She's an artist. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Oh, my heavens. Yeah. Oh, I've never been. It's so, on my the... list. Very. Oh, late. okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend like five days in Rome and Bologna. We're going everywhere. Mm. Anyway, oh, come back with some photos and stories. I love I'm it. sure. Yeah, and food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. no. Hi, Tara. Tasting. Hi. Yeah, hey. How are you, Ian? I'm good. I'm good. My my council um, my person that appointed me on the council who I meet with Natalie is the mayor. That's right. I know. I was, I, know. With her. I was joking with her. I go, I'm going to tell my friends that I text with the mayor now. <laughs> she's, so she's so down to earth. It's so very funny. She texts me. She's like, Anne, I'm the mayor. <laughs> <It's> like, oh, <laughs> <sad."> <laughs> so funny. I love it. Oh, yeah, man. she's pretty neat. I'm, I is. met her when I was out doing some canvassing with uh, Victoria. Actually, <laughs> she and I went to. Um, Hi. She and I went to uh, people who had signs up on Victoria Street. We're not recording, right? That no. was uh, no, her no, opposition. Yeah. And we, we knocked on the doors like, well, now why do you have these signs up? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this. Yeah, yeah. She let me do all the talking for some I love reason. It. Yeah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's great. Oh, yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. And and she won Victoria. That took a long time to find out. Yeah, that was Man, crazy. It was. That was crazy. <clears throat> yeah. Well, while we have a minute here, Tara, let me tell you, I just talked to Criminal Baking Company. Yeah. And they sound like they would. They're open to doing some stuff for us for Great. the um, awesome um, dedication. So okay. it would be self serve, but I but it, it would they would set it up and it would look nice and nice. Yeah. So would it be yeah. um the like people would buy their own thing or we would pay them for them to we serve? would pay them. Yeah. Got and it. yeah. So I because I was telling her like for my maybe a hundred people. So I got a mm -hmm. prices for a hundred people for hot chocolate or cider and uh cookies. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I think that would be really great. Yeah. 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 And she okay. said their trays are, you could, they present nice. So, yeah. And no, they all would their stuff, deliver they make it. it look good. Yeah. Yeah. Do we That's fantastic. Do we 
Is that date? Is that date? Yeah, set? January twenty sixth. Oh, good. I didn't hear that. Great. Yeah. Put that down. I don't think we told anybody yet. Oh, good. Then I no, I it's... didn't miss it. That's, I'm going like where we haven't missed high? anything. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a secret. It keeps, it's, it's a secret. moving target, and <laughs> we're like ninety nine yeah. percent sure now that's the firm date, but it's like oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be sending it, out. It was the twenty seventh, and I emailed all these people, and I was like, wait, update. Yeah. And give me the for it's 29 is it 28 26 oh, 26 <laughs> 26 okay i've got it down yeah, yeah. Ooh, and no. i won't actually be able to attend uh i will unfortunately be out of the country on that day so oh wow okay we have where to. are you going uh i will be in new zealand oh okay cool Ooh. I will be uh, trekking across the southern island of New Zealand. Wow. Oh, taking a much needed vacation. Me and my in husband. The, <laughs> so. In the summer, right? Uh, yeah. It'll oh be peak God. summer down there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. I love it. Fun. So I'm very excited, but um, yeah, unfortunately, we'll be missing the dedication ceremony. <laughs> we'll hold it up. Been talking to a lot of people about the eventual dedication, so mm -hmm. I hope to drum up some excitement and support. Um, and we'll well, just you, pass that you'll along. be able to see it um, before you leave because right mm -hmm. now their tentative schedule is to install it between December 27th and December 30th. Actually, okay. bring the piece and set it down on its base, and then the fence should come down right after, like a day after. And wow. so those first couple weeks great. of January, you'll be able to check it out before you leave. Oh, that would be great. He's not going to stay behind the fence until we unveil it. I, I <laughs> thought that one through and I just don't think we can do it. I mean, oh, okay. I feel like we could, I mean, we could leave the fence up until like the day of the event. Yeah. But um, I mean, I guess that's something that maybe you, me and Jeff and Jessica can have a quick powwow on I mean it it will cost another thousand dollars for the fence rental because they don't prorate it so there's that that's that's one consideration <clears throat> but mm -hmm. not the end of the world um and then I think it's we were afraid that like it would be a bigger impact on the square and so far it hasn't been too bad so I would just want to check on any events that were needing that space mm. uh if there were any in January I don't know if there is though so that might not be a consideration after all okay. hi all um since we are rolling toward four o'clock i'm going to go ahead and start the stream i just want to let everybody know before i do okay thanks eileen great so we'll we'll connect about that soon okay sounds good I kept waiting to see those cookies Anne was going to put on that cake stand <laughs> or something. Oh, she didn't have her headphones on. We wanted to know what you were putting on that cake stand, Anne. I know. That's what yeah. I always like. It's just easier on my neck or something if it's a little bit higher. That's oh, what I, I, oh, you put your last on it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, That's a good I would wait for the cookies or the cake to appear. <laughs> I know. I am not a baker. So, no, that is not yeah. what's happening. But you're right. It's true. Yeah. It's and I have stacked up my uh, old art history books from college. Exactly. So. You got to have some sort of platform. I know. It's so true. Uh, funny. Well, reminder that I need to take butter out of the fridge right after I get off this meeting. I am baking? actually going to do some some baking tonight. Yeah. Yes. Oh no, nice. I know. I, I need to make some cookies. That's one thing I want to do. I'm gonna bake some uh, ginger chocolate cookies. My uh, mm. sister in law had a recipe that she said her kids were uh, just wowed with. So I was like, oh, mm. I gotta try that then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My neighbor just brought that exact kind of cookie over, and they're really good. It's it's an interesting combo. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <sighs> Does the well, city holidays. shut down at all, Tara? Um, I'm taking some vacation time, but um, really the only days that are actual holidays for us are the 26th and the 2nd. Oh, okay. Good. Mm. Hi, y'all. How are we doing? Hi, Nico. Hi, Nico. Good. Hi. 
Happy Thursday. I just had to check. I was like, what day is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's the holidays, y'all. It's it happening. Is. Time starts to melt away and disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 just so you know, I also saw the cake stand and I literally thought she's gonna use it as a stand. I said, brilliant, because I'm literally on I'm at my um it, uh my brother-in-law's place and I literally was like looking where I was like I need a shoebox I need something exactly to you gotta get it up I know I was <laughs> like this isn't working it's exactly. perfect it's <laughs> perfect I couldn't tell that you could see it that's funny I was just paying attention to what I was doing wow <sighs> Nico I don't think we talked about this are you and Kevin going to be sharing the presentation from your screen or do you need us to run it Kevin will be sharing it Kevin okay. will be screen sharing it great. thank you yeah great, great. Are you out of the I'm state, TV, Nico? Nico, are you? No, I'm in, I, I'm in LA. Oh, good, good, good. I was in like New York City last week. I was, then we popped up to back up hometown Petaluma and then we like drove all the way down. And, you know, I would wow. say that that drive to LA, if it was just four hours, even mm -hmm. five hours, but it's that Thank extra you. two or three hours that really gets me. It's yeah. true, especially getting up to, if you're coming up, get it, once you got to get across the bridges and come up again. <sighs> It's too much. I know. And the five, the five is so sad. <laughs> it's just a sad five. five. I just see beautification. True. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hi, Kevin. Kevin. My mom told me that she really wanted to go to Switzerland specifically just to see cows, and I told her that she just lived <laughs> way too close to the Central Valley to go for me to fly with her to Europe to see cows. It like. <laughs> The answer is literally. This is Sonoma in your County. Bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> literally. That's funny. I love it. <laughs> go drive out to you Point Reyes and go see some happy cows at the coast. Mm -hmm. Yes. I always, yeah. I always look at them. I'm the shaggy ones, like the Scottish cows. I'm like, man, if I ever come back to the cow, that's the cow, and that's the place I want to be. <laughs> There's a a farm in the city of Boston, uh, just not far from my apartment, and uh, they have two Highland cattle two highland steers mm. and they i mean yeah compared to the sonoma sonoma county ca cows they're just so sad it's like snowing mm. they're in this little barn like why do we live in boston <laughs> right why are we here <laughs> oh no <laughs> i've got cousins Firstly, everybody there. else in boston's like why do we live here why do we live here <laughs> Part of the cultural identity of the city oh yeah. is it snowing now are you getting part of the storm that's coming in are you gonna have it you know, one of the nice things about being close to the ocean is that a lot of it turns to rain by the time it gets to us. So right. all right. this kind of, I mean, you know, Vermont and Western Mass, they're all getting like a lot of snow yeah. this, this weekend, but we're just getting pretty consistent rain for the next okay. couple of days. Okay, that's doable. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's enough rain to shut down the 101 for- <laughs> Right, but, I know. But it here it's just- It doesn't sprinkle there. No, exactly. Yeah. Uh, where is everybody i know <laughs> i'm texting some folks um i mean okay. i don't know do you have a record of who said they could attend today uh the only person that i know can't attend mm -hmm. was uh sayers hey, that's the only one i knew too okay well let me see if i get any responses back Great. We'll oh, wait a couple more minutes. Okay. While people are still trickling in, thank you all so much for taking the time to meet one on one with me um, cool. over these last couple of weeks. Um, it's been really, it's been really great. It's been yeah. really just helpful. I, I, I've been so kind of excited by our conversations that I keep like in our planning conversations with Nico. I'm like. And then there's this, and then there's this. And he's like, right. But we are very specifically right now working on this. Thing. <laughs> One thing at a time. I love yeah. it. I, by the way, he was talking, I was like, I think Tara has a new employee. I think Kevin. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was going to move to the city of Santa Rosa. I was like, he's going after this. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're hired. Yes. Done. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> More cows in your future, Kev. Invite the mama. <laughs> come, Kev, come. Yes. Uh. All right, we officially have a quorum. Oh.
Where's Lisa gone? All right. We do have Lisa. I'll wait for her to join. There we go. Hey. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Oops. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yes. Cold afternoon. Yeah. For here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the interest of keeping this meeting on schedule, I will be kicking off our meeting this afternoon. So welcome everyone to the December 15th special meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee. A little bit of housekeeping pursuant to government code section 54953E and recommendation of the health officer of the County of Sonoma. Art and Public Places committee members will be participating in this special meeting via Zoom webinar. Uh, recording secretary, can you please let the members of the public know how they can participate in today's meeting? Yes, members of the public wishing to speak during public comment for items listed on the agenda will be able to do so by utilizing the raised hand feature in Zoom or by pressing star nine on their phone. They will then be given the ability to address the committee. Great. Thank you, Eileen. All right, moving on to item two, we've got our roll call. Eileen, if you could please take roll call for the committees on our Zoom today. Absolutely. Member Puentes. Member Baumgartner <laughs> present. Vice Chair Jones Carter. Here. And Chair Kiefer. Present. Let the record reflect that all members are present with the exception of member Asdirian, member Nathanson, and member Sayers. Great. Moving on, I will take a public comment now for items not on the agenda. Eileen, Actually, could you let us? We don't have that on the agenda. It's not required for special meeting agenda. For the special meeting. Okay. Then in the spirit of keeping going, I will move mm -hmm. on to item three, scheduled items. Item 3.1, workshop number four, authentic relationships in program design presented by the Kimson Creative Team. This final workshop will focus on synthesizing the content of the previous workshops towards building authentic community relationships and how to honor these relationships in the pre-production, production, production and post-production processes employed by the Art and Public Places Committee and the Public Art Program. At this time, I'll hand it over to Tara to give an introduction to our team. And uh, thank you for being on. Hey, everybody. Um, I don't need to say much. You all know Nico and Kevin. They've been amazing to work with throughout this process. I'll just turn it over to them to lead us through this final workshop agenda. Thanks. Awesome. Hi, y'all. Thank you for having us again today, showing up with a lot of gratitude on our final of our series of four professional developments. Um, for those tuning in, watching, we'll watch the link later. My name is uh, Nico Kimson, pronoun P. Kim, and I'm the founder of Kimson Creative, an arts and equity consulting group. Our work is to create greater communities of belonging, and that kind of starts with our co-collaborators here, the APPC. And, um, you know, I was just thinking back to our last professional development to kick us off, and I was thinking about um, Professor Danny Dominguez, who really um, investigated uh, community-based participatory research, and there's this phrase that just continues to be stuck in my mind about moving from transactional relationships to transformational relationships. And so to start us off in that spirit, I would just love to, to me, there's no better way to move from transactional to recognizing that we're all complex human beings showing up on a Zoom room today on Thursday at four o'clock. Then just starting just with gratitude as we kind of either are easing into the holidays or are running full sprint and we'll hit a wall at some point. Um, but just would love to start with gratitude of how we're showing up um, to move into more transformational relationships. And so I'll kind of start. Um, and then I'll pass it off. But I'm just showing up with a lot of gratitude for this collective, getting to know who the humans behind the APPC that we've heard about, that we've, you know, um, we've been in more relationship with through our task force meetings, through our PDs, and the heart that you have for the community that you serve. And um, just to kind of really join that and see how we can best support that, because really believing in 
the what happens when community meets artists and the the potential, the possibility. Um, so really, really excited about that and really showing up thankful for that. And um, I'll pass it to um, Anne. You're on mute, Anne. Sorry about that. Um, I'm having gratitude um, for just a lot more connections in the city right now. I was just telling some people that the person that um, appointed me onto this board was um, committee is is now the mayor. She's a council person who just they, they take turns in our smaller city, if you don't know that kind of model. And um, then she got elected by her peers to be the mayor. And I had recently had a long meeting up with her and kind of connecting lives and then her wanting to know about what we're doing and wanting to establish more of a communication back and forth about it. And so it was just like, I didn't really, she was even interested. And it was just like opening up another relationship. And then I was the funny part is that next morning she texted me and said, Ann, I'm the mayor now. And because it had happened the night before that she had, the, that she got voted in. So it was making me laugh, just the funny things that you can feel on the outside and the inside. And we're really all on the inside. And I'm just finding lots of places in the city that are feeling like inside. And I want to bring more people into that. So. Yeah. Come on, transformational relationship. Um, I'll pass it to Chair Kiefer. Great, thank you. Uh, this afternoon, I want to express gratitude for the artists in our community and for the continued relationships that I've been able to foster with some artists. And um, I, the other day, had a coffee and a nice hangout with a good friend who is an artist in our community and wanted to hear more about her uh, experience and her show that she is uh, having artwork in that just opened up today. So I'm very excited for new opportunities for artwork as, uh, or sorry, it's an existing space, but new artwork being shown there and for um, just kind of the ever evolution of how our artists take um, opportunity to express what's meaningful and connect with our community. So I'm very optimistic and very grateful for the artists in our community. Um, love that. Great. I will pass off. And Member Nathanson, we're just kind of going around expressing gratitude, what we're showing up grateful for today. Uh, Member Puentes. Yeah, so I have some, I have gratitude for um, the group of people that I'm able to be in as of today and how we are acknowledging where we're at and where we need to be and um, how we want to move forward and progress. And we're willing to work together to take these steps and to, to move forward. Yeah, yeah, love that. Awesome, we'll pass it to Vice Chair uh, Joan Carter. Oh, on mute as well. I said, okay, I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> I think um, I'm grateful for the fact that people committed to this process that we're going through right now with the eventual outcome that people feel rededicated to the committee and um, more action can be taken from the committee. That's what I'm hoping I can be grateful for. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'll pass it to member Nathanson. Hi everybody, I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late to this uh, session. I was in another meeting that ran over as the story of my life, <laughs> but I'm, I'm grateful for being here actually. And um, I'm actually very grateful to be able to work professionally in the arts and to have the majority of what happens in my life, um, the interaction with um, creative people, the cultural community, and to be able to contribute in um, the manner um, that I can and to just be a collaborator and partner in culture and the arts and in this um, particular community, which I found, I find really inspiring. Amazing. Yes. Yes. 
Thank you, and I'll pass it to Tara. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm thankful for all of the committee members and our wonderful consultants for committing to this process, as, as others have said. I'm also grateful for our team of um, people behind the scenes that you don't see very much helping us run all of these meetings as currently we're troubleshooting an issue, which I'll have to tell you about in just a minute. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you to just everyone for, for bringing everything you have and what you are able to give at these meetings because it varies sometimes and I, I, I want to respect that some days are not the same as another day and just whatever you can bring is really appreciated that goes for everyone thank you yeah thank you amazing and can, I mean there's so much you know, overflow here of gratitude and I'll get to yours Kevin as I intro you um, but I'm especially grateful for Kevin who will be facilitating this last professional development with us Kevin is a dear friend of mine. He is a dramaturg. And if you don't know what that is, that's okay. Um, he's a consultant. He is a creative producer at Art Emerson and at multiple other um, organizations and was is an amazing advocate for more inclusive theater space and uh, performing uh, industry. And I'm just so incredibly grateful that he's going to take us through the journey today of implementing our newly learned muscles and how what that means for this committee. And so I'm going to pass it off to my dear friend, Kevin, here. And Kevin, to start us off, what are you grateful for? How are you showing up with gratitude, my friend? I am grateful for, I feel like we are in a stocked pantry. Like, I feel like there are so many great, like, ingredients in this group and in the, in the city of Santa Rosa and just, like, in the PDs that we've had. Like, this is, like, a season finale episode of Chopped. And what I am, like, hoping that we do today is, like, look at some containers and be, like, what are we actually cooking here? Um, and we'll come up with something great. Uh, or we'll come up with a few ways to go about cooking something great. So uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful for all that's possible. Um, it's not always a, a given every day that we get to um, think about what could be. Uh, you know, sometimes we are so in the the go of it, we don't get to stop and be like, wait, why are we doing what we're doing? And who are we doing it for? And how can we do it better? And how can we have better impact? And so I'm always grateful to be able to take a little bit of time outside of the kind of race to say like, who are we? And let's do this better. Before I dive in, Tara, I just love a technical difficulty. So I wanted to give you a second to see if there's something you'd like to share with the Yes, class. thank you. Um, Eileen may chime in with more information, but unfortunately two meetings that are city meetings that are happening concurrently were, were created in Zoom with the same person's account. This being one of them and our design review board being another. They start at 4.30 and they have to continue their meeting and essentially adjourn because they don't have a quorum to deal with the issue that's on their agenda. So we are being asked to end our meeting at 4.20, take a 15 minute break and reconvene at 4.40 some, no, I don't know. Sorry, Eileen, could you go over the exact times of what we can expect here? And thank you all for your patience and understanding. I'm so sorry about this. It's um, a very unusual and unprecedented situation for us. Eileen, are you there? Could you give us the exact timing that we oh, need to go by? I'm sorry, I forgot to hit unmute. Um, we will be um, stopping the meeting at 425 and then I will be restarting it right at 440. Um, at, right after that, if you all wanna go, come back on using the exact same webinar information, we'll be good to go. So again, so sorry about that interruption, but Kevin, I just want to see in the next nine minutes, is there anything you want to get us started on that we could take those 15 minutes to work on? Is there anything like that that might fit into our um, agenda here? That is a great question. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of some work on the fly here. So stick with me. All right. Um, I am going to do this. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to get into presenting mode here. And actually, I'm going to get out of presenting mode. We're going to skip my joke about being the person that emails you all the time. And we're going to just uh, show a little bit of a spoiler alert. So 
uh, when we have a little bit more time, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at um, uh, the kind of the highlights of the past few PDs. Um, and we're going to think about kind of things that Socorro shared, things that Lindsay shared, things that um, that Danny shared, and really revisit those principles. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply them to, as I understand, the two uh, two aspects of the annual work plan. I've watched a lot of your meetings. We've spent a ton of time together that you don't even know about. So thank goodness for the public record. Um, uh, and yet I cannot claim any kind of expertise <laughs> in the kind of intricacies of, of these processes. So as we go through um, these kind of uh, looks at, at what you've put forward, um, stop me, correct me. I'm really uh, looking at you, Tara, for things that the city thinks like, oh, wait, hold on. And I'm looking for you, uh, the members of the APPC, to say, actually, uh, we have a different vision for this or we think this might work differently. Um, and uh, what I wanna emphasize is two things. As we go through uh, these kind of uh, different focuses of um, community advisory board and the toolkit, um, we are not obviously in a position to make any decisions today. And the benefit of that is, be, is that we can just talk, right? We, we don't have to worry about motions or seconds or quorum or approval. This is actually just that space to kind of talk through what does all of this mean and what do we actually want to achieve with this and how do we do it with diversity, equity, inclusion, access, belonging, honoring the artist's voice and considering the role of the community as collaborator. Okay, so that's one thing. And then the way that we're gonna do that as it's said in the nice little copy about this session, we're gonna kind of split it into three sections. Nico and I are three theater people. It's a curse, we can't get away from it but uh, we split everything into pre-production, production, and post-production, right? Casting, building sets, opening night, and then, you know, getting people on unemployment. So uh, we're gonna transfer that over to the work of the APP APPC today, thinking about um, what are the steps and considerations we make when approaching a project? What happens when this project is working and going and in go mode? And then what happens after? How do we uh, intentionally communicate the learning so that the next time we approach a process, it's done better? So some questions that we will look at together are for something like the Community Advisory Board, why are we doing it? Who needs to be there? What do they need? What does the APPC need? What resources do we already have? And what resources do we need? So I'm gonna be asking these questions in real time. So in our brief adjournment, I would love for you all to have some answers ready and to think about who is really a question of diversity. What do they need is really a question of equity. Not everybody needs the same thing in the same way. And so how are we designing something like a community advisory board to meet people where they're at and to honor their needs? What does the APPC need? Something that's so important when building partnerships is it's not charity, <laughs> it's collaboration, right? And so it is your partners will feel honored when they know what you need from them and you are transparent about it. And then therefore they can be transparent about what they need from you. So what does the APPC need? What resources do we already have? And then what resources do we need? The answers to both are money, <laughs> but maybe there's others. You know, Maybe there are, are things that we haven't considered about how we can find impact in this work. So essentially the same questions we will look at time permitting in, um, let me just share, 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 share. We're going to just skip forward the old fashioned way. I know that we're coming on adjournment time. On the toolkit. Who is this toolkit for? This toolkit, first of all, I loved this meeting because you all fought for this toolkit. Tara was like, I don't know, guys, it's a full year. And the members of the APPC were like, I, this is the hill for me. I, I'm here for this toolkit. So let's get into it. Who is the toolkit for? Who are you making it with? Who does what? Whose job is what in making this toolkit? How is the toolkit made accessible? And how does it stay relevant? 
I love a strategic plan because a strategic plan makes a beautiful paperweight. It makes a beautiful filler in a bookshelf. I love it. We don't want the toolkit to be like that. We want the toolkit to be a living, breathing document that people engage with, that people update, that people say, I tried that and it didn't work, or this worked better than I ever imagined it could. So here's my testimony in this toolkit 3.0 about how great it was getting my mural approved. So these are the things that we will dive into when we come back in just a few minutes. And what I will do is I have just downloaded those slides and I'm gonna throw them into an email and send them to Tara. If you could please send those out to our committee members here to review, have those questions. Um, and what I will also say, Kevin, if you wanna pop up the consideration slide that we've created that have the three is, as you're looking through those, we've created a tool for you that summarizes the learnings from the past professional development. And so you can kind of look at them as a series of filters that says, when I'm thinking about the advisory council, let me go through diversity when I say who, right? When we say, what do they need? Equity. Let's revisit these definitions and the tools that we've been given. And then we can move on and say, great, the committee, when we, when we go back to the state of the artist, how did we center their hopes and dreams, right? What, what do they need? What tools, what resources, what education training, right? So here's the, the new muscles and kind of a summary sheet that allows us to process and be a filter for us as we move through these questions. So I package these in an email. I'm going to send it to Tara right now, and Tara will send it out to the collective. And I guess that will be kind of our 15-minute break is to be thinking about these questions and then come back to a facilitated conversation with Kevin. Thank you so much. Sense, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for your understanding with this. I'll send that out as soon as I get it from Nico. And then please um, log on using the same meeting link at 440. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to end the stream now. Remember TV commercials? That was the TV commercial. Yeah, a little commercial break. A word from our, break. Other, our other committee sponsors. Oh well, I'm that gonna, was fun. <laughs> I need to just take a couple of minutes, just do some quick housekeeping so we can get this streaming. Thank you all for your patience. Is there anything we'll need to do like rules of order wise about relaunching into the meeting? Um, That's you know, a good question, Eileen, do you have an answer for that? I think it would be wise for us to um, do roll again, um, mm -hmm. just to sort of basically state that, you know, show that we have a quorum again. And I'm going to go ahead and start the stream and then I'll finish renaming everyone. What happened to Melanie? I lost her. <laughs> and so around since we had this break is it is the meeting going to go longer or just Kevin <laughs> and I made some slight adjustments that I think will expedite and okay. um get us sliding in right at 5 30. oh thank uh, you oh, okay. wow. you're, you're okay. amazing <laughs> yeah usually I have no problem I can stay longer that's usually how it works but just for today that unfortunately doesn't work we're going to plan fast.
<laughs> no, but this is an important meeting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there she is. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get on for some reason. Hello. Oh. I think Nathan could join us too. So we have one more member now. Great. Me too. Hey. I'm um, so basically what we're going to do is I will go ahead and um, take roll again. I'm at your direction, Chair Kiefer, and um, I will start renaming mm -hmm. you once we get through that process. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Eileen. Yeah, please go ahead and take roll call again. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Member Nathanson. Present. Member Fuentes. Present. Member Asterian. I see that you've raised your hand. Member Baum Baumgartner. Here. Vice Chair Jones Carter. Present. Chair Kiefer. Present. Let the record reflect that all members are present with the exception of Member Sayers. All Great. right. And I'll throw it back to Kevin. Thanks. Thank you so much. OK, so we are back. And we are diving in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a quick recap of just some concepts that we've discussed before. And then we're going to hear what you all thought about in our time away, in our little recess. Uh, so understanding diversity, equity, inclusion in the arts. This was Lindsay's fantastic presentation that she gave us all those what feels like years ago. What I really appreciated about Lindsay's presentation is that she kept centering, centering these concepts of diversity, equity, inclusion, access, and belonging into these categories of people, place, and medium. And I feel like in our time together, I've just learned more and more about how applicable this is in so many different ways. People being artists, people being constituents, people being neighbors and friends and other committee members, places, wh who is seeing the art and benefiting from its presence there? Is it privately owned? Is it publicly owned? And then medium, you know, is it mural? Is it um, street painting? Is it installation? And how we can really think about these principles across uh, those three areas. Affinity bias, we did that um, wonderful exercise where we mapped out the people closest to us uh, and really looked at, you know, how is it that we surround ourselves with people that we have things in common with? It's so natural. Everyone does it. How do we have an awareness of it so that we're not creating closed loops of feedback when it comes to things like allocation of funds, decision making, and hearing from the community? We had the artist fishbowl conversation moderated by Nico. Our art is very valuable, but our time is more valuable. Demystifying the funding process would be an enormous help if only somebody would make a toolkit. And there is joy in everything we do. It makes taking the risks worthwhile. And maybe the most important quote of the fishbowl, keep the wine, give us the money. Uh, huge gratitude to the artists that spoke with us um, for their candor and for their dreams. I mean, these are artists in, our, in your community that are really carrying such bold vision of how their work can transform the landscape. And um, they are carrying so much in the doing. They are their own producers, their own managers, all the things. Um, and so it, it's really a, a beautiful ecosystem that you're in and that you are already supporting and that you are growing to support better. And then of course, Professor Dominguez's incredible presentation on CBPR about how we are putting community right next to us, marching along with us at each step of a process. I have never thought about research so um, kind of expansively uh, bef you know, before her presentation, um, thinking about how really so much of what we are doing is in building relationships is a kind of research um, and applies so much to, to the work that you all are doing. Nico brought this up a moment ago, but the transactional to the transformative, right? From exploitation and erosion to nurture and cultivation. Something I'll just say about this that um, comes up in other um, kind of work that that I do, but um, often when we talk to, about in conversations about climate justice, there's, and especially in art spaces, there are such questions around like, but ugh, how do I, is it just like, what kind of paint do I use or or, or how much am I touring? And uh, the real question is, 
how are you moving from an extractive practice, practice to a restorative practice? That's how these things intersect. And so this slide is actually um, so uh, important and applicable, and I encourage you all to, to, to reference it often in your work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then there's this amazing kind of checklist that Danny gave us of how we involve community at each step of the process, building on the previous, and then this checklist of questions for ourselves, right? And these are for us as individuals, for us as a committee, for us as connected to the city, for us as citizens. These are all the questions. Um, people of a place, um, how am I showing up? Why am I showing up? And how am I uh, checking in continually about my commitment to this process? And then Nico made this incredible slide with all the information that we just talked about condensed into one place. And so you have this now and uh, you'll have it moving forward. Okay, so Daniel work plan, there's a lot that you all have to do in the next year, but two things that you have prioritized are this community advisory board, as mentioned in the strategic plan and the toolkit. Um, which we have ch uh, chosen to really put um, resources towards beginning this process, ideally this year. So the Community Advisory Board, somebody tell me why. What, I know that there's an official, there's official language in the, um, there's official language in the strategic plan about what this Community Advisory Board is to do, but that official language is less interesting to me than how you all might reflect it back to me now. Melanie? Um, it's important, let me make sure I'm on the right one. It's important to have um, more input than just the APPC and a connection to the community, which we're lacking currently. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and community involvement needs to increase. So. Um, so that we need to have people that have a direct pulse to the different communities within Santa Rosa so that we're not making assumptions um, based on our small group. Mm -hmm. I love That's that. That's what I wrote. <laughs> Other thoughts on why? Jeff. I agree with everything Melanie said, but also um, it helps for people to know what APPC is about. And so the community advisory board members will hopefully be able to share that information and their, what they learn about the process and what they're trying to accomplish can then go out to the neighborhoods and, and friends and the communities that they represent. What I think is so beautiful about this concept is, you know, we think about, how, I said this to some of you in, in, in our one-on-ones, but we think about how Danny frames CBPR as kind of uh, sharing power with the community, sharing resource and access with community. You know, it, it's that same impulse that actually leads to the creation of APPC, right? The city council could say, we're going to approve and do everything about public art in the city, but instead they find members of the community that they appoint to take on this responsibility. They share that power out. And what this community advisory board can be is actually you all sharing the power even further. Right, you still have the responsibility and, and, and uh, of approval in your role as a committee member, but you're saying, actually, this is something that we can share. Um, this is a conversation that we can expand, and that's really beautiful. Um, and so it's it's really exciting to see you all prioritizing that this year. So who uh, who are the kinds of people? Wh where are you kind of looking? to source this community advisory board. And I'm just gonna put up on the screen a little reminder of a phrase that might come into play in this conversation. Um, so who, who? Yes, Melanie. It's gonna be a broken record here, I think. Um, I think it's really important to have make sure that we have underrepresented groups um, 
on the advisory board and not just people that we know um, that are leaders within the art community um, and not necessarily the art community. Um, yeah, I mean, I think back to that session with Socorro before we began and there are like maps where the city has prioritized neighborhoods to to focus resources on right and so it, it actually doesn't have to be too much of a guessing game about where to start you know there there is there is uh there are tools available to us uh on where the city is prioritizing and where the appc can then prioritize whose voices we are hearing and listening to other groups types of folks psychographic profiles yeah Kristen. i i would add to that that um, I would like to hear from students, youth participants who are um, creating art, but then also going to be inheriting a system and hopefully uh, participating in our local government. So I would be interested in hearing from um, high school and college age folks. Um, I would also be interested in hearing more from uh, and, and having a seat on a committee, um, but just different groups of people that have not been part of the conversation previously. So echoing um, Melanie's comment about how to kind of tap into who's not at the table and how do we get them to the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, intergenerational space is so important. Other thoughts on who? Great. I might just throw out um, thinking about a, a quick question of, is there clarity in this group on who makes the, the decision around who is on this committee, on this board? No, so then I'm gonna phone a friend and say, Tara, do you have clarity there? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it needs to be a discussion. I think we need to figure out exactly how to do it. There's no, process necessarily that is determined, predetermined for this. So um, that gives us the flexibility, I think, to explore what's going to work the best. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's, it, it is not, it, it is essentially, even though it has this official sounding name, Community Advisory Board, and we may have to actually not call it exactly that because it can be confused with our um, pre-existing council formed community advisory um, board. <laughs> um, but I mean, we know what the intention of the group is regardless of exactly what its name is. And I think our consultants for our master uh, strategic plan used it because it's a good description of what the board needs to be, the group needs to be. Um, mm -hmm. it, it Because it is not, it, it functions more like an advisory to the APPC and to the public art program. So it's removed once from all the other city boards and commissions and committees that are advising council. So it doesn't fall within, um, as far as I understand, any kind of policies or procedures that are predetermined. I think we have the flexibility to figure out exactly how, how people are identified and invited to participate. And then it kind of goes into some of your other questions, like what do they need in order to participate um, as well? So. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really exciting, right? That like, that it's a decision that, and a framing that you all can kind of come up with. And I would say that like, emphasize that first and like get that squared away so that we know who is holding the decision. And then you can like dive in to the work, right? I mean, I think sometimes when processes are are um, unclear, it, it, it be, can become a way to, um, with the best of intentions, kind of procrastinate in actually doing the thing because it's like, well, how is this actually coming about, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, we can take the time to say, actually, okay, this subcommittee or this meeting, this regular meeting of the APPC is gonna be about, here's the process. We want them to do this. And we're going to have them named and you know and communicated with by this time, blah 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 blah. You just have to know that. So now we all know that this is a thing to be sorted out. There is no kind of official process to guide the appointment of this committee. 
Um, I'm so glad that you said invitation, Tara. That's so important to think about how folks are invited. I've heard in a lot of meetings um, about wanting further community engagement and something that every single uh, organizing body in the world is thinking about right now is how to be better at this. Um, it's very common to be like, we want people to come to this thing or we want people to tell us what they think. So we're going to put it on social media. And this is what we call the megaphone effect or the megaphone approach. It is useful and it can, it can reach a wide amount of people, but it is not guaranteed. Putting something on a city's Instagram page or their Facebook page is not a guaranteed way of getting people to show up or to know that they are actually invited, right? So I think um, we can consider the relationships that you already have, starting with community organizations, people that have approached you about um, wanting public art, about with projects to have public art. Hey, you came to us a few meetings ago with a wall that you already found an artist for. Do you know folks in your community, in your circle that you think would be interested in being a part of this conversation, um, artists who have been funded, artists who have applied. Um, there was one artist that I was hearing in a meeting who had applied to a bunch of things, but but it just hadn't quite worked out yet. That person is like begging to be civically engaged in this process. And so maybe if not that person, someone in that person's circle is a, is a good place to start. Um, and then thinking about what they need, which will take us over here. How are you hearing and gathering information about what this committee needs once you have a sense of who they are? Once you have a sense of what you, the APPC would like them to do, how they can be involved, how they consult, um, how, um, how do you invite them in? And then how do you give them space to state what they need? Uh, what are some things that they might need? Uh, oh, go ahead, Nathan. Sorry. No, no, you go. You go. Okay. Uh, I I think that we often anticipate or, or assume that folks have all the free time in the world and can just show up at any meeting at any time, and that's so not true for so so much a huge majority of our community. So, uh, making sure that we can uh, provide incentives or compensation or scheduling or childcare, whatever it is that these people need to participate, I think should be a major consideration for what they need. And I, I mean, I also feel like they need very clear, a very clear understanding of what their role is, um, what their relationship is between their advisory group and the APPC and the program, how the program functions, having clear roles and responsibilities so that there's not um, disappointment or mis misunderstanding about what they're there for and what they can see happen, what they can affect. You just spoke like half of my notes out loud. So I love that. Nathan, you have the other half? Oh, looks like you might be frozen, Nathan. All right, we'll All come right. back to Nathan. Lisa, do I see you leaning in over here? No, I was just looking at Nathan and seeing that he wasn't moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sure. said it was Can you cold out there. Yes, but I just wanted to echo what uh, Tara said. I mean, I totally agree, but also what we're just looking for is access. That's what art artists are looking for, access. And um you know, that might be a space and, you know, an audience or just they want, you know, definitely want resources. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nathan, you're back with us. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I, in my experience, you know, if things are, if you're trying to sort of grease the wheels on getting something going, then funding is the place to start. And you know, generally what's missing for people. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing would be um, space to practice in. Um, and I know Tara some years ago had a kind of pilot program around making vacant downtown spaces available and ran into some issues with mm -hmm. the city attorney maybe. 
Um, but I think that that is, uh, you know, just identifying vacant spaces and either pairing um, the owners of those spaces with artists or um, identifying municipal, municipally owned spaces that artists could use in the um, production of, of, of projects would be great. Um, and I think another thing that's often important, at least in my experience, is um, establishing skill sharing relationships or facilitating skill sharing relationships between cultural practitioners, um, especially around material production, fabrication support, these kinds of things. Um, and then I think kind of out of the sort of social matrix of those interactions, um, questions about place uh, and, you know, how we occupy space, how we utilize resources. And to it looks like you're, you're freezing a little bit again, Nathan. So urge in a way that's maybe I don't can't too much about that. I've got an unstable internet connection. <laughs> yeah, we didn't quite catch all of that. I, I just want to jump in here and say that I want to make sure we're clear about are we talking about what artists in the community need or are we talking about what the participants of an advisory um, committee? But maybe I'll just wrap up my comment. Mm. Yes. Okay. This is perfect. So I'll say this, Nathan, for the next time you have something to share, if you could share with your video off, that might help prioritize your, um, it just helps the, the internet capacity. Okay. Um, but I, but you bring up really good points. And then Tara had a really great question clarifying that are we talking about artist need or, um, or community advisory board needs? And what I would say is, um, I think a balanced board involves both people with resources to answer artist need and people with expertise in artist need, right? So I think it's actually really exciting to think about when we are thinking about listening to the artists and centering the artists, there you will have people that are saying, I want to be on this community advisory board because I know that artists like me need space, need skill set sharing, need these things. And they will come, they may be interested in participating in the board as a means of, you know, getting those needs, which is great. And it's about saying, great, you are here to continually center those needs as we go about doing this work. Um, sometimes when we do things like open up to community comment, we're like, oh, thank you for sharing that. But that's not, I mean, I don't mean in the process of a meeting, but I mean, truly like in a process, you know, a, a larger process. It's like, oh, uh, thank you for sharing those things that you need. We don't have that we're actually asking about this um but what you are what you can capitalize on there not a great word but you know bear with me is um the interest the engagement the passion the energy um the, that's a resource that that person is bringing and that is a resource that this committee needs um on the ground lived experience so very very helpful there um we're running on time. So I'm just wanna just see how, where I can kind of skip ahead here quickly. Um, oh, also Tara, you just mentioned um, other needs might be around new scheduling. One thing that I might offer is considering what does asynchronous engagement look like? Um, what are ways that people, uh, you know, really piloted actually in the quarantine, um, how to get lots of people brains working towards one thing without necessarily being in the same room or the same space at the same time. So maybe it's Zoom, but maybe there are other ways that you can pilot getting folks input on things without asking them to you know, commit. And also underlining um, a set expectation of hours committed. Um, you know, that kind of boundary can be really helpful. Um, that's kind of all in the production process to remember the frame that I mentioned before. This is when the actual doing of the thing. So then I think at each step of the way, checking in. So in this post-production moment, thinking about what are the indicators that it's going well or that it went, the outreach process is going well or that it didn't go well, right? You might have low response rate. You may have confusion about the work of the APPC. You know, like how do why, I'm not sure I wanna be a part of an advisory board for something that I don't know what they quite do. 
And you also might come across something very real that we all face, right? Which is imposter syndrome. You might say, hey, person in the community, you'd be amazing for this. And they're like, eh, I'm just some muralist. I don't know about the city and the workings. And I don't know how to like put on a powdered wig and pass a motion. I don't know any about that. And you all can say, we actually built this container for you and your expertise. You know, and I think it's about that person to person, human to human, Santa Rosa resident to Santa Rosa resident saying, no, no, we value and want to hear your voice and checking in with each other about, okay, I'm asking people and I'm running into some barriers or this description of the committee works really well. So next time you talk to somebody, use it, you know, put it that way. Um, something that I've seen this committee do in various forms is... Um, stop and say, we maybe we need to think this through. Maybe we need to reimagine this. Maybe we need to approach this differently. Maybe we need to blah, 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 blah. You all already are practicing a culture of not embracing status quo. And I just want to say that that is amazing and encourage that, right? The inevitably in time, you can, the committee membership will change, new members will be onboarded. But if there is one thing that the APPC can be known for, and it's like asking great interrogative questions, Anne is like, Anne asks a killer question. Like Anne will like be in conversation with an artist and has just an incredible question about supporting that artist and what they need. Melanie, you, your questions and your advocacy for things that the that the committee has put forward as priorities, it's incredible. So like, let's just make it firmly the culture of the committee so that no matter who's here serving, people know that APPC is responsive and, and listening to both the needs and goals that the city has put forward, but also, you know, the needs and goals of the artists and the citizens that you all are serving. Okay, super, super fast in about a little less than eight minutes, the toolkit. What I want to emphasize here, I think we have a sense of for who, so we don't have to spend a, spend a ton of time there. With who, I think we also maybe have a little bit of a sense, right? People who have applied, people who might have resources, people who might need resources, there's a lot of different ways that somebody could come to the APPC with a question. And I know that you all have a, a good grasp of who they are and what those questions are because you live in the community, you get these questions all the time, right? I have a couple questions about how is it accessible, but what I wanna think about in this meeting is who does what? How do you break up, th this, is a, this is an elephant. <laughs> how do you, how do you approach this big task? Anybody have ideas there about how to even start? Well, I, one thing I think, it, I feel like we could identify even in our smaller APPC group, um, who has kind of what, who's got a, a line on what kind of questions and what kind of info, like who specializes in what, what, what are each of us good at? I don't even really think we've ever taken an assessment of our collective gifts and resources, even within our group. And it seems to me that if we were going to try to make ourselves accessible and be able to relay information that's gonna help someone get another step up or get a little closer to their goals, we need to know who to, who, do, who does Tara or us or the whoever is connecting. Oh, you want to talk to so and so? Or you should be. I just think, could are we allowed to be outside of this group and talking to people without being listened into by the community? I mean, is that? I assume we do, but I just don't feel like we've been launched out that way. Um, I mean, some of us are artists, working artists. We we actually have some skills. Some of us have really great administrative and. Um, possibly writing skills and just different things like that. I just think it would be great to know where we start. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that kind of asset mapping is great. Melanie? Um, I also think we can take best, best practices from other cities. Mm -hmm. um, 
that are are doing something like this i mean we can steal with pride um so that we don't um you know have to reinvent every single wheel but mm -hmm. you know if there's something out there that another city is doing that we think is great we should um connect with them i think that's allowable mm -hmm. and uh, see how they're you know if they if anybody else has toolkits i guess that's what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. um, yeah I mean, you all should know that people are stealing from you, right? The last time I was yeah. at, with my family in, in Ventura County, I, I met the person who works for the city there who does the public art. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, Santa Rosa, they're like gold standard. Like they, <laughs> and, and yet, you know, there are things that you'd like to work mm -hmm. on. So people mm -hmm. are watching you watch other people yeah. Yeah. And, and see what you can learn. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? Yeah, I think something that would be helpful with the toolkit is to um, not only do an assessment of collective gifts, but also an assessment of what's working and what needs improvement and to come at it from a lens of usability, you know, um, by taking away kind of, I guess, the veil of your experience of working with the city for as long as any of us have, but to come at it with fresh eyes and say, you know, maybe kind of have like a, a jargon dictionary or, or something to that effect of breaking down the legalese um, by saying what works and what doesn't and what's confusing and what's kind of jargon. Mm -hmm. That brings up, oh, Nico. I, I was just gonna, and I think it's what you were gonna do too, I just wanted to hop in and, and just connect it to these strategies and this muscle that we've been learning, right? And just naming what you said, Chair Keeper, was about affinity bias. Right? How are we constantly evaluating where our bias comes in? And then how are we, what you said about access and user design, right? By defining it in these categories that allows us to say, how will somebody interact with this as an issue of access, mm -hmm. right? And then what, what are the parameters or what are the filters we move through in order to continue to expand our bias around this subject? So just looping it back to these learnings and there's that, you know, that kind of cheat sheet that we've had that allows you to walk through and say, oh, usability, that's access, great. What are those considerations around access that we're doing, right? And so I think it's, it's exactly that, naming that, defining that, and putting those as priorities as you move through the design of these, yeah. Yeah, and it's really like, you know, it's really feeding two birds with one seed, right? Because you've got another priority of, of assessing the kind of policies and procedures of the APPC. And if you're spelling them out in a toolkit, you're, you have to go through them anyways, right? And if you are, this question of with who, if you are doing this with community, and whether that is the starting with the community advisory board and into a larger process, if you're doing a question campaign, whatever the mecha mechanism you is you use to hear community, you'll get practice actually. Mm -hmm. um, hearing feedback about what those policies and procedures are, how they feel, how they look, where they're confusing, so that when you go back to this kind of, there's a slide for the presentation that doesn't have a hiatus, that, um, that, that just reframes, centers again what the kind of charge of the committee is, right? And part of it is advising on policy and procedure. And so that is uh, something that's part of your work and that you can do um, really in community and in partnership and it'll make the toolkit better and then it'll in turn improve the policies. Um, accessibility, this is just like a um, another layer of accessibility with the toolkit, but just to name, where does it live? How do people access it? Is it purely digital? What if I don't have a computer? Is it in the library? Is it at city hall? Is there a large print version? What languages is it translated into? Um, uh, and that gets tricky because there's this question of how does it stay relevant, which argues for it to be a, a living, breathing document. So what is a kind of agreement among this group of, okay, maybe it's every two years or maybe it's every three years we check in and we update it knowing that we've got copies at the library, we've got copies at City Hall, we've got copies in Spanish to be updated and, and in Thai to be updated. So. Mm -hmm just to remember kind of where these things go, how people find them, and then um, how to keep them current. 
that raise any questions for anybody? All right. Seems like a long time. <laughs> I mean, because you know, think you you know, if something's not working, we'll hear about it from hopefully we hear about it from the community and we'd be able to or people who are using the process and we'd be able to respond faster than every two years but mm -hmm. yeah i understand what you're saying about the upkeep of it but it also could be an onboarding tool right so that maybe every time a new committee member gets appointed you hand them the toolkit and say what's confusing Hey, welcome. You're new here. You don't know what we do yet. <laughs> this toolkit is is our kind of front porch to get people in. So give us your thoughts and maybe we can make a little zhuzh. And Sounds with the good. use of the word zhuzh, I'm going to pass it over to Nico because we're coming towards the end of our time. <laughs> what I think in that it's a great question to that last comment is really about accountability, right? When we go to that post-production phase of something has been completed, a project has been, how are we accountable to its relevancy to our community? How are we, you know, coming back to it? Is it every year? And I love kind of what you said, Kevin, it was about really the agreement. What are we agreeing on to being accountable, right? To multiple languages, to accessibility, to people interacting it, to relevancy. And so I think that is part of your kind of your from pre to thinking about it, production, implementing it, and then post is the accountability that you make agreements on to upholding the standards and the values of which you came at this project. Um, I think this is amazing. And what, what I love is in just hearing this conversation is um, really about us um, leaning into hearing how you begin to process what developments you've made as saying, oh, here's further considerations I wouldn't have thought of before, right? When it comes to DEIA, or here's how we might listen to artists more, or here's really, I mean, the CBPR presentation in an hour and a half with an incredible roadmap to really like print the slides and say, what is the way in which we want to listen to the community, right? What is the question that we wanna know is what resources would an artist or an arts and culture worker in our community be interested in, right? We don't hold all the answers. And then it goes into, well, what's the method that we're gonna collect that data, right? And so there's a beautiful roadmap right there for you to start going after one of these and, and using one of these in your um, practice for the committee. Um, I just kind of want to take us in, uh, into um, verbalizing learnings. We have thrown kind of a lot at you in these four professional developments and really starting to sew them into how the committee operates, right? As getting these new muscles and seeing how it might look in a toolkit, how you apply them to a, a, an advisory committee. And so I just would love to kind of um, turn it over to you all for some sharings of just saying, you know, we've, we've listened to these, these past three, we're in this fourth PD, but here's, here's one, here's something that surprised me. Here's an observation I've made. Here's something I'm excited about implementing or, so I just kind of want to turn it over to you all of this verbalizing something from these PDs that is applicable to the committee's work that gets you excited. That was a surprise or it's, I want to I want to mull that over. I want to research that a little bit more. Just want to offer it up to anyone that's interested in verbalizing that. Thoughts. Um, I will. I'll go. I, I was really inspired. Well, all these all these things have been so relevant in so many ways. But um, Danny's. Um, presentation that she took us through was such an eye-opener about just the careful and thoughtful and um, pattern way that she breaks into a community. I mean, with, with ears open and um, with the attempt to respectfully find out what's important and finding the people that she can do that with and empowering others. Not, not, it's not about her or it's not about us. And that, that's where I'll transition that. It's just that it, it, it just the decentering off of this meeting and into getting into the community. That is probably the most exciting thing about this for me. And I'm not even sure how it's going to look, but it is hopeful. And um, so 
And I know it's been a weird three years, so right, it's strange, but we're we're moving that way. So yeah. that has really awesome. been. I'll. Thank you, thank you, Anne. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, turkey for. Uh, I also wanted to uh, echo Anne when she was talking about Danny Dominguez's presentation and the overview that we got on community-based participatory research. I was very thankful that she went through and very or very um she she gave steps for all of the research um uh, ways to approach it and the last step i was so glad that she provided a reminder of as an action step of how will we use information and um having done research myself i know that that's not always the um an area that gets a lot of attention on and so i was glad that she brought that back to our committee of so we have these tools, but what do we do with research once it has been collected? And um, yeah, once you've kind of gone through the steps of, okay, was this approach to doing research equitable? Did it um, hit all of our markers of wanting to reach a diverse group? But what are we going to do with the information after? And that's something that I have like, oh, wanted to dig my teeth into a little bit more of how do I bring that back to um, future projects? Yeah, I hear action being uh, an interest from the collective, right, of how do we activate the potential within this committee? Yeah. Who else? Anyone else? Oh, yeah. I will. Number point of Gilbert. Yes. Hi. Um, my, one other thing, too, I just, uh, Danny, Danny definitely, there was quite a few things that she said that really have stuck with me, and one of them was, um, us on the APPC or that you've even said as a research, you don't come in with the agenda. The community tells you the problems. The community identifies the problem. And that's what has continuously stuck with me is they, you know, to listen. And um, so I definitely, I appreciate that. But, and there was a few other items too, but I know we're short on time. Um, but that's for sure on the top of my list. Yeah, yeah, that's huge, huge, and a new practice to learn, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anyone else, you know, verbalized learning, thoughts, surprises? Great. We'll move on here to, um, in order for us to really kind of uh, be good stewards and to kind of uh, be the best collaborators, we're gonna be sending out a survey uh, at the end of this that just goes through a little bit of questions about our professional development. We highly encourage you to take it because it'll kind of rev us up for us to be better educators, to be better facilitators, but be to see what else you're interested in learning, how else we can come alongside you and support you with professional development opportunities, mentorship, or really activating this work in community. So we'll be sending that out um, at the end of this workshop. And then also our work continues on. Kevin and I are meeting, uh, I'll be meeting with the EDI task force moving forward. And then Kevin will be meeting with the engagement task force to start activating these new learnings and pillars and really guiding those processes of implementation. Um, and then after that, the last one I really have is just a heartfelt thank you. Thank you from the team at Kinsen Creative for hosting us in such a warm environment, for being thoughtful collaborators and, and just showing up um, ready to learn and ready for action and engagement. So that's just from us at Kinsen Creative. We're, we're so thankful to have spent time with you in the Zoom room. And I'll just say a special shout out for Kevin for organizing these CDs, having one-on-ones with you all, and really kind of guiding this educational process collectively. Um, that's all we currently have right at 5.30, even with the recess. Um, but um, it will kind of, if you have any last um, questions, uh, we'll be here, but just a heartfelt thank you from us. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Nico. This has been thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. Thank it was great. Yes. Done. All right, Tara, we'll pass it to you if we need anything yeah. else. Thank you so much, both of you. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon, but thank you so much for your mm -hmm. participation, your presence and leadership throughout this process. It's been really great. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just turn it back over to you, Kristen, to close out the meeting. Thank you. Oh, um, we should call for public comment. I don't think there's anyone on the call, but please go ahead and do that before you close out. Thanks for the reminder, Tara. Uh, at this time, I'll take public comment. 
Do we have we any have, messages? We, we have no messages, emails, or um, public comments, uh, or anyone, members from the public raising their hand at this time. Great. Thank you for that. And uh, as we part for our evening tonight, thank you again for that great food for thought and uh, recap of this great learning opportunity that we've had over these last four sessions with you uh, and our one-on-ones. That has been very informative. Um, I will be, um, or sorry, moving towards adjournment. The next regular meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee scheduled for Monday, January 2nd is canceled due to the New Year's holiday. So I wish everyone a wonderful and joyous and safe and healthy, mm -hmm. happy holiday season. Thank you everyone for your hard work and uh, I'm looking forward to see you all in the new year. Yes. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Thank you.